Good morning, church. And we welcome you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior. I'd like to read our call to worship from Revelations today. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be the kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. Father God, we thank you for this day and let this be a blessing for you. And watch over us and grant us your Holy Spirit that it may touch each one in a powerful and mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us welcome in the light of Christ. Sing one verse, 362 in your books. One verse, celebrate Jesus. that we might have so uh, if at this time let us go ahead and pray and ask God for his guidance let's pray father we thank you for this wonderful day thank you for this time together thank you for the fellowship we are having and God we know that you are in charge of this whole situation we don't need to fear we don't need to be anxious we don't need to worry because you are our God we have faith in you and faith in you is what you're asking us to have true faith Faith in believing and knowing that you'll watch over us and be with us and take care of us. Yes, we pray, God, too, for all those folks that are on our prayer list, those that have been mentioned, those that have been we've talked about, those we have uh, written in, those that have called, been called in. Watch over us, God. You know who they are. So thank you. And we give you the praise and glory. And we thank you, and God, in, in the wonderful name of Jesus, whose blood saved us from our sins. And whom we give glory in Jesus' name. And we all said together, Amen. Amen. Pastor Kathy, you want to sing some scriptures for us? I will. Please, if you be so kind. I will. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. I'll be sharing from the word this morning from Psalms 51, verses 1 through 7, and pick up verses 10 through 12. Here we know that through the Psalms, it uh, gives us an opening that David was crying out to God to remove his sins. And as Pastor said, we, we are forgiven through the blood of Jesus, and we can claim that through God's word. So let me share. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. 
Wash away all my equity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Thank you, Pastor Kathleen, for those great words from our scriptures today. I'd like to talk a little bit about our offering. Again, Joseph has put it in our bulletin that you send in your tithes and offerings. They are important to us as they keep our church going and the word of God being spread. Again, the post office box that we want to mention is the P.O. Box 17, New Hope, Virginia, 24469. P.O. Box 17, New Hope, Virginia, 24469. And we thank you very much for your giving in your, your heart through your offerings and your talks. Now at this time, I uh, would like to, uh, I'm excited about today. We thank our musicians, Gail Johnson who was playing our organ and Bill was playing the guitar for us. And they came in especially, this is their day off. And so they came in and they were helping us do this service. And they will be here Sunday to help us do our outside service as well. So don't forget, this Sunday, 1030, at the church, parking lot service, please come. Fill your car up. Bring the people to hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome that we are able to do this. So we're grateful. And so at this time, though, Bill's going to do a special for us. And what the Lord has done in me. So Bill, thank you.
song, Bill? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, sister. We have had the opportunity to worship last week at a sunrise service. And we did a sunrise service because on that particular day we called Easter was the day that our Lord and Savior, after spending our Friday through a horrible experience, and that word doesn't even compare to what he went through, he was put to death, they put him in a grave, they closed the stone over the opening of that grave, and on that wonderful Easter morning, he walked out of that tomb, alive and well. But I want to share just a little bit this morning about why when we think about he had to do this, he had to do it for a couple of reasons. But the one main reason is because of sin that came into the world thousands of years earlier. He was sent by God to come here as a pure sacrifice for that sin. And that sin is a horrible thing. Sin is against God. Sin is something we do deliberately. Sin is sometimes we, we uh, don't realize we're doing it. But sin is the very thing that, that caused Jesus to have to come to earth as a human. It's, it's going against God. Everything that he stands for, his purity, his holiness, it's disobedience. And we could get into uh, all about sin and what kind of sins there are, but let me just stop there without going into that and say sin is what caused Jesus to die. But he had to do something. You see, during the Old Testament, and I think you remember this, Kathy. In the Old Testament, in order to be forgiven, they had to use a lamb. Yes. They had to take a lamb, a pure lamb, and they had to sacrifice it. It had to be a blood sacrifice. It couldn't just be the person. It couldn't be anything. It had to be blood that cleansed us. Yes. It had to be pure. A lamb that was new. Hadn't done, gotten in any trouble yet, so yes. to speak. But you know, it's an amazing thing that, that Jesus had to do the same thing. He had to come and shed His blood on a cross. And let me tell you, the cross was the most horrible way to die in all history. And I can tell you this, you and I don't have to go to the cross because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I want to share for you one of the very wonderful verses that I know personally because when I was 12 years old, I was given this verse on my confirmation. 1 John 1 7. So I'm going to read it to you and just touch base on it for a little bit. And then Pastor Kathleen's going to touch base on some of the things that have touched her life and how important this is. But we're going to talk about the blood of Jesus Christ and what it meant for us and why he had to do it. It's, it's an amazing story because it's the only story that is the truth about how to get to heaven and how to get to God. You're going to hear all kinds of preachers out here telling you there's more ways to get to heaven. There's, you can earn it. You can buy your way in. You can do all kinds of things. You can believe what you want to. But I can tell you from this moment on, Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to the Father but through Him because He gave His life and died and then rose again. No one in any other religion did that. No one in the history of this world, no one has done what Jesus did. He has given that, he has given that right because he was willing out of his love to save you and I from our sin. Yes, our sin, not his. He was innocent. So let me share a few words from this. It's in verse 5, it says, This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you, God is light. And in, the, in Him there is no darkness. You see, Jesus was pure. Jesus was sinless. He was very human, but He committed no sin. He didn't walk in darkness. He walked in the light. He's holy. He's pure. We're the ones that walk in darkness. 
So just to describe him on that first verse is that God is light. So I'm grateful that he's the light. Amen. He's the light of the world. Amen. He's the light for us. And there is no darkness in him. Now listen to this. But if we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. You know, if what that's simply saying, what I understand it to say, that if we say, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus, I know what he's all about, but you, when we say that, but yet we're still walking in sin, we're still going out here deliberately and doing things we know are wrong and living that way, and I could touch on a whole list of sins, but I won't, because you know what it is, and you know when you're doing something wrong, and if you don't, then I feel sorry for that. But I can tell you one thing, if you're living in that way and you claim Jesus, you don't really believe it. You're not telling the truth. You're lying. Oh, Bob, I don't lie. Well, if you're not living right and you're living like a sinner deliberately and know the difference but won't quit, then you're living a lie. And I'm going to tell you. But I also have something else to share to go a little further than that. But, now here's the but. Now, you know, people say we shouldn't say but, right? We shouldn't say but this, but that. But you know, here's a but. Here's a but. But if we walk in the light, and he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. You see, if we choose Jesus, then what do we need to do? What are we going to do, Mr. Pastor Kathleen? What would you do? What do you feel about this? Bill, what do you think? Gail, you walk in the light? Yes. What, what does that mean? We're walking in the light means simply this, that we're walking with Jesus. Amen. And if we walk with Jesus, then the sin part is forgiven if we realize it and we try our best not to do that. You know, we're going to fail. And I, I hate it. I'm the chief of sinners, as Paul says. I fail. But I walk with Jesus and I try not to sin. Amen. Because I know what the Holy Spirit's in there. As you talk so many times, Holy Spirit. And you stand up on a Sunday morning and say, Holy Spirit, right? Amen. All right. Amen, Pastor. And I'd like to share with uh, one of the saying that Pastor's talking about, their, the repentance. It's a process. Mm -hmm. It is a process. And we all can make that decision to come to God and cry out to Him for that forgiveness that He can give us through the connection of Jesus Christ. All right, let me, I'll just finish this and you can get in the part you have. It's I really just good. wanted to share where you no, that is yes. powerful. If we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, purifies us from all sin. Yes. The blood of Christ is the only way we're forgiven of our sin. Yes. It washes us clean. Amen. Purifies us completely from our past, our future, Amen. and now sin. And as this morning we were having a little bit of trouble here at the service with a little bit of attitude from the angel. But I won't say who it is, of course. I won't say that to you. But anyway, I'll just look over in that direction. <laughs> what man? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Isn't it awesome, the story we have here? The yes. blood of Christ cleanses yes. you and me. That is the only way to heaven. You don't have to do anything else. Just give your life to Him. Yes. And let Him forgive you. Repent of our sin. If our country would do that, Amen. if our leaders in our country would get on their knees and ask Jesus to forgive us, He would heal this land. Amen. But we're, we don't seem to want to do that. We want to just cast Him out. Mm -hmm. I heard of one of the governors from the governor from New York say, it's not God that's going to do this. He mentioned God and said he didn't give God anything. It's not God. It's going to be something else doing it. I thought, wow, wow, you're in trouble there, Governor. Because yeah. I can tell you this much, God can heal this land, but God is also sending a message to us that we got to get right with Him yes. before the day comes that He's going to come back and, and end all of this. And it's coming. So we better be ready. So the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Yes, Kathy, you have something from, well, Isaiah, I think, but would you like yes. to share that? Let me read the words from His... His speaking from Isaiah 1, verses 17 through 18. Um, and I'll carry it over if the Lord moves it to be in verses 19 and 20. But to pick up a little bit, you know, our God is the judge of all things. And I do believe that when we go into the walk of asking for forgiveness, uh, it, it changes us. 
And we can have that change to start happening today with this nation. I do believe that it is obeying God. And the only way we can do that is with that great desire to come to Him and be cleansed in the blood of Jesus, who died for each and every one of us. So on that note, let me, let me share from Isaiah verse 17, beginning to verse 20. Learn to do right, seek justice, defend the, the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle this matter, says the Lord. Though you sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Here we're told we can be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Again, Pastor, I believe what you have shared about this nation can have a turnaround. It is all about the repentance and coming to the Father. So you know what? We do know God is the great judge. I like the word you said, come. The word come means invitation. It means to come to Jesus when, when we are feeling the effects of our sin. Yes. And come to Jesus when we're having a hard time, when we're going through rough times. Come to Jesus when we're grateful and thankful. Come to Jesus anytime. That's our hope. Yeah. That's our anchor of faith that we have by knowing who we are, His children. Yeah. And anyone can have that experience. Just ask. It's open to everyone who would like it. It's and simple. I it's simple. The Father God did not tell us we had to do no more than just come to Him and submit ourselves to Him. You know, we all have that struggle because there's still some of the old nature that we want to be able to have control of. But it's not, it's not that way with the Father. He gives you that freedom. But once you open up to the power that's within us, that's given to us, it's, it's, it's just easy to walk. And it's easy to obey when you spend time with Him in His Word. And let the cleansing. It's a purification. Uh, uh, you know, my experience, it's like being filtered every day. That's a good way to put it. Being filtered every day. You know, there's something that along my walk, my activity, that I have to cry out and say, Father God, forgive me. You know, so it is a process. You know, it doesn't hurt to ask for forgiveness. No, I believe our Father wants us to constantly ask for that, to remind us of how humble we need to stay because we cannot walk it in our own strength. We need Him. Well, it, it, you got to get rid of your self-image first. You know, you got to get rid get of over your, yourself. I'm first. I'm, I'm the yeah. one that matters the most. No, you're not. Jesus is the one that matters the most. But He loves you enough to allow you to be who you are. He Amen. wants you to be who He made you to be. All that you've been created to right. be. Right. He wants that. You know, and... I can't encourage enough people to share that experience. It's great joy and peace. Thank you. And joy peace. and peace. That's awesome words. Yes, ma'am. That's exactly what we need to be doing is being thankful for what God's done. Amen. And the blood has done it for us. The blood of Jesus, Jesus. Christ cleanses us from all sin. Amen. And He bore those sins. He bore all of them. Past, all by Himself. Present, and future. Right. And that is hard for us to embrace. Well, but that's you know his it's the way to heaven. And let me tell you something, folks. It's coming soon. Jesus and God are giving us warnings. Unless you turn back to me, unless you be ready to go, uh, unless you're saying yes to Jesus, when he does come back, you will be left behind. And I hope that doesn't happen to you. And this is the truth. We have all through the Bible in the New Testament, it speaks of, of the prophecies that are coming and Jesus is yes. going to come back. Yes. And when He does come, He's going to take His with Him into heaven. So, I know that you don't want to be left behind and know you don't want to go through this tribulation that's coming. So, the blood of Christ can cleanse you from that time. And, and it's you. coming now, though. You better save be ready. You. Yes. And, and, and just like He said in the Scriptures, be prepared. So, the blood of Christ cleanses us from sin, yes. cleanses you from sin, Beautifies and us. may God bless us on the words that were spoken today yes. through His wonderful power in the blood of Christ. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we're going to do two songs in our closing and ask our musicians to please play for us and sing these two songs. If you want to introduce them, you may.
you washed in the blood, and there's power in the blood. We're just going to do the first verse of each song, and it speaks to uh, the message we just heard. Amen. Christ who cleansed us from our sin. Amen? Amen. 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 